you're Dead Light. Yes. And you've worked with the likes of Iron Maiden, haven't you? Correct. Yeah, and they started in my that? flat. They started in your flat? Yes, they did, in the East End. Right, okay. How did that work out? It was great. Yeah, yeah, it was good. I was doing a load of stuff, doing Battle of the Bands stuff yeah. uh, back then, and uh, put on a gig, mm. uh, which Steve Harris played at, and they came in second, not with Iron Maiden, yeah. a band called uh, Gypsy's Kiss. Yeah. And um, then he started going out with... Uh, a friend of mine yeah. who went to school with my first wife yeah. um, and basically she said I'm going out with this guy can I come and rehearse at this big old church house that cool. we were squatting so I said yeah not a problem they came and rehearsed there for a year mm -hmm. and then Steve said oh do you want to go and do some roadie and stuff I said yeah I'll make you up some lights and stuff so yeah. basically that's where my career first started right, okay. um, and then the rest is, is history, really. Obviously, you were there when I made it got bigger and bigger. Yeah, I stayed there yeah, till somewhere in time, which was the one where the whole stage set turned into the Eddie Monster. Where, where so what's the Eddie about? The Eddie, well, I don't know, really. He's a funny little character, isn't he? Hmm. Basically, Derek Riggs is the artist yeah. uh, who does all the work for, for Maiden. has done, I don't know if he still does, but he mm -hmm. did it back then. But the actual face thing, the Eddie thing, um, we had the backdrop and yeah. a friend of mine that was an artist who lived in the block where I lived yeah. had a mask and if you listen to the words of the Maiden song mm. it says see the blood flow black 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 whatever the fucking words yeah. are um, so I thought what would be a good idea is to stick an id up there <laughs> which was a mask right. and then I got a fish tank pump yeah. and some blood and put yeah. it into this oil can and basically get the certain point that it happened which was press the old button oh. yeah. <laughs> it came out. So that's the first creation of Eddie cool. as such. And because it was just an Ed, mm. it was the joke that was going around, really boring really. This couple had a child, but it was only an Ed. Right, okay. That's all it was. And the doctor said, when you're four, when your son's 14, bring him back mm. and we'll be able to fix him up with a body. Right. So it comes to Eddie the Ed who's sitting on the mantelpiece. And their parents come up and said, Eddie, it's a very special day today. It's your birthday. Cool. And he says, not another fucking act. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the Eddie the Ed came from, basically. As simple as that. It's just an Ed. And then yeah. when we had it in the pubs, it just coughed up the blood. Yeah. Then when they got their deal, basically Derek Riggs had one of his portfolios there. I used to have spiky hair. Yeah. Looked a bit like the Eddie monster. <laughs> And that was that. That's yeah. how it started. And then I created out what Eddie, you know, came up with a lot of the concepts of where Eddie was going through the time I was there. Yeah. So how did your career progress from Iron Maiden then? After I left Maiden, I went and did Prince, right, okay. somewhere in time tour. And then from Prince, I went and did Ronnie James Dio, the Dream Evil stuff. Yeah. And then I went and did The Cult. But I've been, the band I've been with most of the time is a band called UFO from right, the okay. 70s, which I've just been to the States with. Um, and finished, and obviously girls' school, which I just did some shows with Ronnie James Dio just with this last week. Um, did a bunch of TV work, uh, did a couple of um, pop programs, and, and worked at the London Astoria yeah. uh, for ten years as the house LD yeah. down there. Went a bit mad for a while, too much consumption of fun things. <laughs> So I had to backpedal right. like crazy, which I've been doing for about the last 12 years. Yeah. Um, and I'm 50 next month. Oh, are you looking forward to it? Uh, yeah, you sort of. Big plans? Have a big no, plan, no, no, nothing. No, just just happy to be alive, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and the Clive Aid stuff, basically. I've known Clive obviously because he was in yeah. the band. Then when Clive left and then I left, we did a few projects together. Yeah. After that, um, and obviously it was very sad to find out about you know his, his problem as we like to call it and um, when I can help out with the Clive Aid stuff I do yeah. I mean you know it's all for charity mates you know what I mean is it all going well like do you think it's reached it, the point where it stops or can it go so much oh, I further? think it could go further I think it, it, it's it's a gradual progression I think yeah. the more people to get involved um, and there's a lot of good people out there. Yeah. Um, it, it can only get better. I mean, we were in Norway about six or seven weeks ago. Yeah. Fantastic with the Iron Maiden fan club out there. Had a great time, lovely people. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about the Maiden people or the Maiden fans. Yeah. Are very loyal. Yeah. And that is what's very special yeah. about it. And it's very special that they, they've taken on the Clive Aid thing as well. So what are your plans for Clive Aid after this? 
Well, there's a thing next week, I believe, in London that I'm going to go along to as a special guest, meet and greet Dave Light, which is quite funny. Um, and there's a couple of other things. I think they've got the Blood Fest coming up, yeah. which I'm going to go and be part of. Cool. Um, and there's a couple of other things which I quite, can't quite remember what they are at the moment, <laughs> but they are there. Cool. Um, but as much as like, if I'm not working with the UFO guys, I'm there just to help yeah. out. And so. what do you hope to come out of today? Like, what do you hope to achieve out of today? Everyone has fun, really. You know, and, and they, they get a bit of money. Yeah. They can put it towards um, multiple cirrhosis and cancer research. Yeah, because you're doing um, um, teenage cancer. That's right, yeah. Cancer. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, hopefully we can make some money for that. Awesome. Not much else you can do, really. <laughs> You're in it for the good cause. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's like a busman's holiday, isn't it? You know, you <laughs> meet up with your old mates, that sort of behaviour, so... Kind of like a win-win thing. Yeah, it's, it's all win. It's yeah. all win and no lose, really. And it's, as I said before, it's all for charity, mates. It's, 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 it's a good time. What kind of, like, obviously you know Clive. Very well. So that inspired you to do this, but was there any other reason to do it? Mainly because of Clive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, very, he, he lives down the road from where I live in London. Yeah. Um, You're still in contact with and him. Still in contact yeah. with him. Obviously, it made, I feel a bit sad. You know, you know, it's hard to see someone who was that motivated and, and that talented. talented and everything. You know, just very, very mobile person yeah. to see him now uh, not being able to do that. It, it, you know, and I'm a bit of a softy. You know? yeah. So I have to be in the right frame of mind to actually go and see him myself. Yeah. Um, so I don't want him to see me upset and then make him upset, you know, yeah. it's daft really, is it? But, you know, quite a sensitive character, oh, you know what I mean? A bit of an artist. But know. when you do see him, it's great. Oh, it's yeah. great, it's great. And I've, I've actually been very busy, so I've not, I've not yeah. been able to. I mean, he only lives four stops away from me, but you have to be... In the right frame of mind. In the air, yeah, because it's... Just don't want him to see me, you know, feeling sad. Yeah. And that's not what he wants you know, yeah. at the end of the day. And I, I just... I'm a very emotional person like that, so it's very hard to hold that in yeah. when you see someone you love and worked with for so many years. Yeah. So. Thank you for talking to hey, us. Hey, it's no problem. I hope nice it all go. You. Yeah, it all go. I hope it all goes well for you guys. Thank you. I hope you got my best side. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, see you later. Rock Cheers. on. Thank you. Yeah, no Appreciate problem that. at all.